Okay.
sit up here. Oh, hey, 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 how are you looking, Chris? You liking it? Chris loves it. Hi, everybody. I'm Mike Polk, Jr. Here for WKYC. I'm at the 31st annual Wade Oval. A uh, 31st annual uh, Parade the Circle here at Wade Oval. And let me tell you, it's a beautiful day to have a parade. Um, we decided to live stream this for you folks. Why not, right? Um, it's a really pretty, cool Cleveland tradition. In case you don't know what this is all about, I can tell you a little bit about it. Parade the Circle is a colorful and resplendent procession of costumed artists performing, artists and puppets, and mystery, and magic, and mayhem, and it is a Cleveland cultural tradition. Bye. Yeah, get them, show them, show them, Chris. Absolutely. Don't, don't, don't waste your time on this ugly mug. We got a parade to watch. This year, the theme of Parade the Circle is transformation. And the dragonfly is the symbol. This was chosen by the uh, lead artist of Parade the Circle this year, Hector Cassianos Lara. He is the art director overseeing this theme transformation. Parade the Circle was missing for three whole years, and boy did we miss it, uh, due to the COVID nonsense. Um, but now it's back with a vengeance, and that's part of why he chose the theme of transformation. I'm gonna quote him here. Hector said, we all need to change in our lives to grow and self-reflect and adapt to any environment or circumstance that we may face. End quote. Now, the people that you're going to see marching here are all community members or groups of artists who have been crafting and creating their own costumes and creations that you're going to see today over the last three weeks. Three or four weeks, even more than that, I guess. Uh, so I'm not going to talk through this. Don't worry about it. You're going to get to watch the parade. Um, but I do have a list of the performers and creations you're going to see here. I'm going to just mention who is responsible for these beautiful creations as they go by. And other than that, we're just going to let you folks enjoy a, a really cool Cleveland tradition. This is the 31st annual Parade the Circle. Our first group here, you won't be shocked to learn is called the Rhino. The float was inspired by a Durer print in the CMA collection. So you get a little trivia nugget they gave me. It's nice. I'm gonna tell you what the thing is. That was uh, made by the group called the Rhino, and it is the Rhino. And that is how this is gonna work. Okay, now this next piece here is by the head artist himself, Hector Castellanos Lara. The title is Living on the Bright Side. And the program description is Playing and Dancing Under the Mystical Dragonfly. Look at that dragonfly, folks.
arrived at our next group, and that is Samba da Cidade. The title of their creation is Ironfly. Here's the description, folks, of their piece, Ironfly. Yoruba god, Orisha, Ogun, clears the path for humans and presides over creativity, justice, technological transformation, iron, and metalwork. But I probably didn't have to tell you that. Again, this is Ironfly by Samba de Sedade. decided to make herself of the parade. Rather than discourage, that sort of thing is actually encouraged here at Parade the Circle. Anyone's welcome to join in. Ensemble. The title is CMA, that's Cleveland Museum of Art Directors, and UCI Directors. The Cleveland Museum of Art Director William Griswold opens the parade with UCI President Kate Borders and other circle and civic leaders. Arms residents. Their title is Carnival of Excitement. And the program description is Come to our carnival and see the sights. We have the Women's Council of the Museum of Art. The title is Tiffany on Parade. Breaking Tiffany's Glass Ceiling, honoring head designer Sarah Driscoll. Be kind. Queen Bee of Kindness and Bee Friends 
all the buzz spreading cheer. Bringing that cheer heat. You guys look great. back up here. Never a shortage of odd traffic jams. Hey, I parade the circus. Next, I'm pretty sure we have reached Oh, here we are. The Flow Homeschool. The title is Bathroom Buddies. And I'm pretty sure that's where we're at. The program description, full bathroom. Good, clean fun, folks. Jazz Unit, providing some New Orleans style jazz for us, right behind the bathroom thing. we have the extended family. The title is Wakanda Forever. Oh, that's good. A spirited display embodying transformation, revitalization, and healing against the odds. interrupting the Wakanda scene. I really did. I'm... Hey, Bombay! 
Okay. Boy, I'm dropping the ball here, folks. Sorry about that. I believe we saw the Cleveland Inner City Ballet. Their title is Egyptian Butterflies. Sorry, ladies. Appreciating the royalty and transforming their lives. And then up after that, where they're coming fast and furious now. That Wakanda backup's gone. After that, we have the Oliver uh, St. Clair and Friends. Oliver C. St. Clair and Friends, so sorry. With the theme of pillow fight. Some nights, the struggle to fall asleep is overwhelming. Even the pillows are putting up a fight. Next. That is Sue, Barry, and Friends. Their title is Gnome. We're fun guys. Frolicking in the forest. Followed by, I believe, Sh Sheila Das, Sheila and the others. Also frolicking in the forest. A lot of frolic. Good. It's more mushroom heat. Yeah, just keep it on the mushrooms. That's good. Tell you, I'm just gonna read a couple of these folks. Hopefully, I'll get one of them right. Koya Bostic and the Goldenrod Montessori School. The Wildflower Brigade, the colorful and downright adorable wildflowers of Goldenrod Montessori come to life. Oh, I see, that's coming up. You'll see it. There's a teaser, everyone. Let's see what we have. Oh, that, that really cool thing that you just saw, the black and white theme thing. Don't worry about it. We missed it. It's done. I'm blowing. Just give the people a nice steady shot. Um, that was Robin Heinrich, Mark Jenks, and Cosmic Lottery. That was really awesome. Next up was Pat Willis, Monarch Butterfly. That's one big butterfly. Is that... Can we see a giant butterfly? Sorry. Okay, I'm gonna say, sorry, I'm mixed up in my order here. Believe it or not, some of this can be a bit discombobulating. But I'm gonna guess that's the majestic rainbow lobster and herring. It's an endangered sea species. Keep them bright and brilliant. And that was created by Denijois. Denijois, I hope I said your name right. You deserve for it to be said right because that is a really cool creation. Nice job. Okay, this is cool too. Look at this. This is, this is Animal Spirits. That's what this one's called. It's by Robin Robinson and Sankoff and Art Plus. Animal masks inspired by the artist's heritage.
Who's here now? What could just happen to drop in? I was here. It's Todd Messick. Uh, this is the chief officer uh, of the Cleveland of, um, of the uh, Museum of Art. And how are you? I'm ecstatic. I mean, look at this energy. Beautiful here. day for a parade. A beautiful day for a parade, and like so good to have it back. Knocking it out of the park. Everybody's knocking it out of the park uh, so far. Uh, these are, I'm never. I am always amazed by the uh, creativity in the area in this area, and it's an awesome way to display it. People who might not know, who might be watching this, and uh, we get a lot of people in Reykjavik watching and stuff, um, why don't you just describe a little bit of history of this parade and, and uh, what it means to Cleveland? Uh, so this is the 31st year. started uh, uh, a while back with kind of a, a grassroots thing, with local artists parading it around the circle just celebrating summer. We now, um, for the past 30 years, the Cleveland Museum of Art has uh, supported it, run it, managed it with all these people. You see these, these artists, these fans, these schools, all these groups of people that just want to be part of the celebration. So we're excited to have it back, obviously, every year. But this year in particular, a couple things. One, it's the first year we've done it in a, in a few years since the pandemic. So just to have that reemergence and that, that whole... Um, that transformation, the dragonfly theme is so apropos this year. We also have Hector Castellanos Lara as our lead artist for the first time. I got to meet him. Charming gentleman. New good energy. Kind of good energy and kind of bringing in a, a, a like if, new... If someone had to give me bad news, I would want it to be him. Like him just be like, she's leaving you or whatever. I feel like I wanted to come from Hector. Well, such a nice guy, such an amazing artist. Too. I know, from I saw the, his stuff. From the, the, what he did in the parade, but as a visual artist too, he's just a, a, a Cleveland treasure for sure. So to have him in, on board, he created the, the uh, Dragonfly uh, La Buela theme. Um, but it's so great to have it back. We've yeah. got great weather. we got all people doing these amazing things. The energy is palpable. So explain to people, or like for people who might not understand how this happens, you know, normally a parade is like a bunch of uh, fire trucks yeah. uh, or the this high school marching band. This is not like any other parade that is, uh, at least in this area that I'm aware of. Why do these people do this, and how much, how many millions of dollars are each of them getting paid to perform in this? So the budget is not what you would think it is. <laughs> it is the um, it's the artistic expression, right? Yeah, they're because they like doing this, and this like is their thing. It. And also, um, you know, it's true to our mission, like just to celebrate art. But it really did kind of come up from the community, this idea. And you have, you know, you see great costumes, but these people have been working on it for months. We introduce workshops so that people are maybe not sure. We kind of get them along. There are some groups that have been doing it for 30 years, and they know it. But it's amazing the creativity. These mache costumes, the elephant walking by that, you know, really look like an elephant. Um, some of these school groups, these bands, but you're, you're – um, you're so right. Not your average Fourth of July like fire truck parade. This is a true expression of creativity and all that Cleveland has to offer. And I feel like there is uh, is one of the more. It feels like the whole city is here, and it, the city is all represented. And by that I mean like there's something weird, right? Uh, like I just saw like the bathroom um, display, <laughs> and then right behind that is a Dixieland band. Right. And somehow it all makes sense together because it's all because none of it makes sense. You, you really do have all all facets of Cleveland represented, both you know, um, civically, culturally, artistically. Um, what's also great is the community support. Like all the institutions, Cleveland Museum of Art runs it, but all the university circle institutions, UCI, Botanical Gardens, Natural History Museum, all the museums in University Circle play a role in this. And you've got this great, you know, you've got the food trucks and the, the, everybody coming up. You've got these yeah, amazing it, it doesn't just end with this parade. No, it'll happen all day. No, uh, there's still time. People can come on down. Uh, how much? About how much longer do you think we have of actual parade? We'll probably, the parade will go till 2 p.m. The whole event runs till 4 o'clock. So yeah. come down, like, get get some. There's a Native American food truck over there. There's different flavors of Cleveland mm -hmm. uh, in there. So you can just enjoy it. I mean, it's, you know, it's we're still in the early parts of summer. We're still kind of really bringing in that new. I really think or Parade the Circle and Berea Rib Cook-Off are in a tie for what announces Cleveland summer, but it's really close. I think we win. All right. All right. I mean, Berea one happens first, but, the, you know, the weather's always a bit more sus. Did you taste the ribs over at the food truck I over there? I have not yet. I'm too well, I think you need bread. to save your vote until you 
Okay, that's fair. That's totally fair. So, this goes on, though, until 4 o'clock, so if people want to come down, they can still come down. And it is a bit of a party afterwards, as I recall. Yeah, all day it'll go. I mean, the museum's open, the other museum's but also, you know, the food trucks will be here all day. University Circle does a good job in terms of just making the rounding that up with a lot of entertainment. You have a lot of civic groups that have tables, like all yes. Women's Council. It is at, you know, is it having kids do make their own little dragonflies. So you got a lot of groups that have a way to participate in their own way and be a part of it. Yeah. Now, these groups that do this, a lot of them are just uh, community groups yeah. or they're from a residence or something like that. Do they, how do they get, how do you get involved in this if somebody wanted to do this next year? They all register with us. And like I said, some of these groups, like we actually coach them along and give them tips about how to make the know how to really engineer a, a, a their idea mm -hmm. and how to make it come to life. There's some groups that we don't even know. They register, do it in somebody's garage for the last four weeks and just putting it together. And yeah. they know and they think about their theme well in advance yeah. of it. I've had some, you know, people that we know through the Cleveland Museum of Art are just friends that are like giving us little hints of like what their parade is and the the thought and work that goes into it, like these big elaborate elaborate puppets, yeah. or you but see a bicycle amazing. going by, or these you know these other things, it just really comes to life. It is. Yeah. Well, it's uh, it shows Cleveland in its uh, in its best light, and this is the city in a really cool way too. Um, and you have all these groups participating. Those one of these groups stand out. Something that you a story of one of these groups that put their theme together that uh, that you're that struck you as interesting or cool. Um, I personally like this, uh, the the New Orleans jazz band, just because that, you know, just the drum beat adds yep. that element to it and that music. Um, it yeah, you can't. That, that com it complements the, the visual aspects it's of it. It's officially a parade when you hear it when the Saints go marching in, I think, right? But I will tell you, this, um, one of my favorites is what we're seeing up here come up, this giant cat. Uh, the woman who put this together, it's a tribute to her, her late pet. Um, but you look at the size yeah. and the scale. And Chris, can you get that cat on the rise? And not to give the silt walker uh, a short shit trip, but I think the like that Stay Puft Marshmallow Man kind of vibe of it approaching us is really <laughs> haunting and beautiful at the same time. Yeah, it's right, it is. Thanks, oh. Chris. And you know, I mean, I like that because there's a there's a cool story behind it, but also just like the just how giant it is. It goes to show how much people into this. I visited earlier in the week uh, because you guys have a tent up on the grounds here where artists can come and work on their stuff all, uh, how long? For weeks, right? Yeah, for uh, I think it's like four to six, somewhere in the area, like six weeks, yeah. Yeah, and that's where they all work together. So it's like, and I was in there and the vibe was really cool of all the artists getting to be together and like work on stuff. I think, I bet you a lot of it is that. I mean, just the, the enjoyment they get from hanging out while they're working on their stuff. Yeah, and it's been great, you know, for me personally, as like some of these people, we do these interviews with you or, you know, other people that want to talk about it. And they're, they love it, right? They're, and they come off, they're so authentic, right? They know it. They're just doing this because it's cool. Yeah. Because they express themselves, because they want to be part of their community. They want to do something fun. They want to, like, show off their artistic skills. And they do it out of just a, a love and a passion for the art. Uh, well, welcome back. I'm going to shut up and let these people enjoy the parade. Um, and thanks for uh, putting on a successful one. I know it took... A million of them to make this happen, but it's worth it. And thank you uh, for making Cleveland look awesome. Uh, thanks for helping us spread the word. We hope people come and enjoy the rest of it. All right. Enjoy the parade, sir. Thank you.
All right, well, here's what we have coming up next. Folks, if you're just tuning in, you are watching 31st Annual Parade the Circle here at Wade Oval. And this next exhibit, that is an ogre float. But I don't have to tell you that. This is by Lou Devilers and Friends. Um, this is an ogre eating this, and it gets a feathery surprise. I saw those ears being made. I know what this one is. This is the mixed cardio drumming. It is titled Herons Transformed, and it is Herons Drumming Joyfully. Hard to argue with. Oh my gosh, I think I have to sing over this so we're going to get flagged. Ah, there's something not uh, copyright. Hell, kill audio. band and they rock I've seen them perform actually before they're amazing high energy funk meets New Orleans street music
if I'm not mistaken, I believe we just saw Jazzy and Baby Elephant prepare for maximum joy. Ooh, that's cool. That is called Dragon Claw. Dragon transforms into a dragon. This is Nina Hearn's Chorus. It is titled The Plague is Over, Long Live the Queen. Upon hearing the news that the plague has been vanquished, the queen and her subjects, in a microorganism adorned coach, celebrate with a parade. Uh, close to the heart of the gang, right? So Do this is... Well, first of all, tell say hi to everyone. Hi, everyone. My name is Kathleen Bond. I am the Director of Communications here at Cleveland Museum of Art. And this is a very special parade quote we have going by today. Um, this is Stephanie. She is our Community Engagement Director here at Cleveland Museum of Art. She is making lemonade out of lemons. Ah. Um, on point with our theme today of transformations. That is amazing. Great representation of that. And she uh, she is very involved in this from uh, beginning or from the beginning to now, right? Yeah, she's been involved, I believe, since 2016. Oh wow! So she goes back. That's a great, great. I mean, isn't it just amazing what they can do? Yeah. Uh, I uh, speaking as someone who like can't properly color, stay in the lines like a kid's menu, uh, a kid's menu at a restaurant when coloring. When, when I see uh, when I see these sorts of creations, I'm just like, it, it blows my mind. It's incredible. And man, it's making me really want a glass of cold lemonade. Yeah, wouldn't that be nice? It'd be so nice. Well, you can actually get that uh, over at the fair thing, right? Yes, uh, Village Circle. So in the center of the parade, uh, you can get coffee, drinks, trucks are there. Uh, basically, any Keep on rocking even after this, this winds down. Yes, it sure will. Good job, Cleveland. You nailed it. Thanks for watching. See you next year. I would have 